Hello everyone, welcome to Ikeda platform and this is Ravin Jangir here, your electrical faculty and in this video, I am going to talk about the short circuit in a bridge. So we will discuss uh, the different different points which I have included in this topic and it is a kind of another malfunction which we have discussed in the earlier cases. So it is kind of the same thing. But so what is uh, actually it is including, so what are the actual the important points? So now we are going to discuss here. So let's start. It is saying the probability to have the short circuit, probability to have the short circuit condition in a wall. We are having the six thyristor walls, such as the one, two, three, four, five, and six is very low. So we can say that is the short circuit condition, the chances of short circuit condition, the short circuit may happen in any of the thyristor is actually very low. When it is operated by the air conditioning, if we are along with that, uh, along with that material or uh, wall, if we are equipped with the air conditioning system, in that condition, we are, we will have the very low chances of short circuit condition okay guys now the second one it is saying that uh, however the bushing flash over so if we talk about the transformers we are having the bushings and in that there is a bushing flash over okay and can lead to the short circuit across the bridge if there is a bridge converter we are taking the converter transformer and the bridge so across that bridge and produce the large current peaks so maximum value of that short circuit current is to be produced there in the walls where it is to be in the walls it is going to be produced there when the wall is already in conducting mode okay guys now now next the point number three is specifying that the short circuit current are significantly seen in the rectifier basis so what is actually specifying that we are having the two converter stations the rectifier and the inverter so the in the rectifier converter stations so the chances of short circuit the chances of a short circuit current is actually the more significant or it's seen in general generally we uh, see the short circuit condition in the rectifier not in the inverter now the point number four is specifying that the what is the worst case the worst case is actually when the short circuit occurs at the instant of firing of the wall at alpha equal to zero as we already know the thyristors are not going to start itself they need a gating pulse signal so that is called actually the firing so if we are providing the firing at the alpha equal to zero or you can say the instant when the thyristor is to be started when there is a short circuit if there is a short circuit then that is called the worst case i hope you have understood with and along with that uh, assumption is taken along with that assumption is taken that there is no index inductance in the series with the bridge so there is no inductance in the series as we have seen in the bridge rectifies now so what is that actually the peak value we have discussed the peak value now so what is actually the peak value here so i can say that one second the peak short circuit current is given by this that is the i peak that is the i peak upon i s plus 3 by 2 that is a 1.5 plus i d naught upon 2 i s so this is a relation which is found from the derivation so we are not going for the derivation we are just concentrating on the important points so i can say the i peak upon i s equal to 3 by 2 plus i d naught upon i d naught upon 2 i s so what is the i s s and i d naught so i have included here the points so what is the i d naught i d naught is actually the dc current at the instant of firing so when the firing or when the firing is uh, given to the thyristor for the conduction of the thyristor then at that instant of time whatever the dc current we are having that is called the id naught and we have discussed in those formulas also now so what is the actually the value of uh, your thyristor uh, is so if you talk about the value of uh, is that is is going to be root 2 ell that is uh, root 2 ell upon 2xc so we have that discussed also in uh, the 
bridge rectifier so that is ell is equal to line to line voltage that is line to line voltage and that is xc is equal to your reactance okay guys now so next is uh, your we are talking about the curve that is a bridge so it will be so bridge voltage and the current so it is to, it is talking about the bridge voltage and the current waveform during the short circuit condition so this is the omega uh, or that is a radian or and this is the id current and this will be a graph for a graph for that okay and this is the peak value this is the residual value and this is going to be kind of the sinusoidal or the positive loop of the oscillatory motion now the next is saying that the maximum current in the wall number three so let the we have taken the wall number three for the considerations or for the analysis purpose so maximum current in the wall number three when it starts conducting with a short circuit across the wall number one because we have already seen that in the commutation failure that there will be commutation the what is the actually commutation the transferring of the current from the wall number one from the one wall to the other wall from a particular portion particular portion in the sense if you are talking about the upper commutation portion and the lower commutation portion if we talking about the copper commutation forces then it will be one then three then five and after the 60 60 degree it will be operated there but so what is actually happening there so if we do the wall so the, there will be commutation from the wall number one to wall number three so at that time the short circuit if there is a short circuit current so what will be also it is a specific what will be the also the uh, current in the wall number three that is actually saying so that is the i peak the maximum value of the current and this is the is is yes, we have already discussed that is a root 2 ell upon 2 xc now 1 plus cos alpha that is alpha is the firing angle plus id upon 2 iss only these points you have to remember don't go for another points also now the peak currents of the order of the 10 and what is the peak value as it is a maximum value and we have seen the graph for that so that is uh, kind of here okay so if we talk about the, what will be the order of that what will be the peak currents how much it is a peak and if i compare with the rated current and the voltage so it is given that if we talk about the peak currents so peak current is actually the order of 10 to 12 times okay 10 to 12 times the rated current and the thyristor walls and the thyristor walls that are 1 to 6 numbered from 1 to 6 must have the surge current that is surge current is uh, oscillatory or you can say the surge current is high voltage oscillations the surge current rating above that value above that value okay so it is specifying that whatever you are having or you are uh, considering the peak value that peak value is going to be 10 to 12 times of the rated current and the whatever the thyristor walls is if we are talking which is having the surge current is going to be also above that rated value above your peak value also okay now next point the fault clearing is performed so as the fault has occurred so obviously we have to do the fault clearing mechanism systems so what is actually the fault clearing so if we talk about the fault clearing is actually performed by the blocking pulses of by the blocking pulses when the fault current goes to zero the wall assumes that the blocking state provided the voltage across a it is not the high now next the detection of the bridge and the wall short circuit is also performed by comparing the ac and the dc currents the detection of the bridge or the wall short circuit so if there is a short circuit condition in the bridge or you can say the whole bridge system or you can say the any of the wall so it is to be determined or it is to be detected if that detection is of the short circuit is actually performed by comparing so what we compare we just compare the ac and the dc currents so when we do this in this case the dc current goes to zero dc current is goes to zero while whatever the ac current is tends to increase 
so at that condition the dc current is going to be zero and the ac current is going to start increasing so that is all about your uh, short circuit in a bridge i hope you have understood all the points which i have taken for you so, and so tata bye bye and thank you so much